I think it's fair to say I really, really like this brand of ink. But will the new edition change my opinion? Only one way. To find out! Today we are taking a look at the Winsor & Newton ink, white ink. Now I gotta say, I was really looking forward to this video because I'm always looking for a good white ink. And Winsor & Newton has quickly become one of my favorite brands of ink. However, I did notice on the packaging, this little illustration here, which normally shows, seems to be done just with, well, blue and black ink. So that's a little interesting. Uh, nothing really screams, I did this with white ink. So I thought that was weird, but we're not gonna hold that too against it because, you know, looks can be deceiving. But it's the same illustration on all the sides, nice little box. Open it up, you get the ink well, which has the same illustration on it, which is super nice. Gotta say, love these inkwell designs. They're super old-fashioned, and on top of that, you know, being squared like this, they really stand out on the shelf. Uh, it's a sturdy, thick glass, and then you can open up the plastic top to reveal the ink inside. So, since this is a white ink, the tests we'll be doing are a little different. So, our first test will actually be how it works with the brush and our dip pen set, because I'm really curious how it works there. And then, after we test it on this black piece of paper, we're gonna see how it can cover up different inks. So, we got Sharpie, Matte, Master, Sugaru, Prisma, Copic, Tombow, Color Test, Random Test, these are just random fine liners I have, then FW and Winsor Newton. I chose these because these are my two favorite inks that I commonly use, so I want to see how they work in conjunction with this white ink. So I think this is going to be a good thorough test for this. Alright, so this is actually pretty good. Noticed a few little inconsistencies here and there in the line width, but it is still staying white. I really like that. And on top of that, I really am happy with these lines. Let's try to make a thicker line. Yeah, look at that. Definitely getting some fading here, but that's still a really good thick line. I'm going to try that again, see if I can control that fading. Not as bad this time. So obviously you're going to get some fading when the ink thins out because it's white ink. But that's still pretty good actually. I really like this. And personally it's a very white ink so that's really nice. Now I'm really curious how this is going to work with the brush because that's going to spread it out more and keep it less concentrated. So I'm curious how the effects will be. That's not too bad. Definitely spreading out more than I would like. It's a little watery. It's still very watery ink, which is interesting. And I did shake it up before use. So that means that it's going to water down more, so you have to layer it more to get more consistent whites. Because right now, it's more like a gray than a white. Like, it's not gray gray, but it's not pure white as it's drying. It's drying very quickly, though, so that's good. But I don't think this is going to be an ink you use to cover up mistakes. So I'm curious as to how you would use this ink because I'm using it on black paper and it's pretty good on camera. In person, it's a little off. I think the brush definitely is going to be its weakest point and the actual use in dip pens is its finer point. Uh, but let's test it with our other ink because I'm very curious to see how it's going to cover those up. So this is our Sharpie test. It's a combination of just ultra fine, king, and normal Sharpie, paint Sharpie, Sharpie fine liner. There's just them all kind of mixed together and let's do this. Now I did this last night so it should have had plenty of time to dry. You know, it's thickly applied but it pretty much covered Sharpie. That's impressive. Let's try Master now. Very good. It covered Master. Now, the big one, Suguru. Alright, so this is just four different types of Suguru pens they made. Let's try it out. It's actually really impressive that it's covering them so well. Let's try the color test. This is just an alcohol marker. It's almost gone. There's a little, little bit of bleed proof on it, but that's not bad at all. Now, let's try Prismacolor, Copic, and Tombow. Not bad. Prismacolor bleeds through just a little. There we go. Pretty much covered. This one's gonna be interesting. This is our random test. Interesting. This one is bleeding. It's actually mixing to create a gray. Why did that mix when the other ones did not? So I definitely got to carefully clean my brush now so I don't pollute the actual inkwell itself. These guys didn't mix at all. Oh, is that mixing? I think that's mixing. Not as much as the other one, but this one definitely mixed with the ink too. So that's interesting. No problems here. And lastly, this is the AW ink. It's that no mixing so far. This one I thought would mix the most, but nope. First off, the Sharpies were pretty much instantly covered. The Master bled through a little bit. Suguru completely covered. And then the color test, there's a little bit of splotching, but that's not too bad. A second layer should cover that. Prismacolor, almost fully colored. Prismacolor is almost fully covered. Same thing with Copic and Tombow. This is interesting because I actually don't remember what all of these are. These two are actually done with the two different ones that these pens
pens I have, and there was no bleeding here. This one was actually done with those cheap fine liners I got at Five Below. This one was actually these fine liners here, and then this was that AW fine liner. But I don't remember what these two are, and they bled through the most. So I'm actually really curious about that. That's really weird. Now our final tests are going to be these right here, the FW ink and the Windsor and Newton Indian ink, because I'm really curious to see how it would cover these ink well. Still definitely a layering, but yeah, guys, that's not bad at all. On camera, it's actually a lot better. In person, you can see a few areas where it's definitely bleeding through. After covering them, I'm actually really impressed. There's a few areas where it's actually bleeding through, but not black, it's bleeding through blue. I, I don't know how to explain that. Let, let's zoom in so I can show you. There's a little bit of blue bleeding through here, and there's a lot more blue bleeding through here. That's really interesting. I don't know why it's doing. Most of the time when you use white ink on top of black ink, you don't get blue. That's really weird. Uh, the paper, it didn't do that. So if we look here, there's no blue bleeding through. So that must be a chemical reaction that the white ink is having with black ink. So that's that's really interesting. I don't know why it's doing that. I kind of want to know why. Same thing with like the bleeding it's doing in some weird parts with some of the ink. But so far I have to say that I'm a little disappointed because I think that this white ink is a little too thin for it to be as effective as let's say the bleed proof white ink. But I'm still fairly happy with most of the results I'm getting. It's just that with very specific uses, like putting it on these inks, I'm getting some weird effects, like do an illustration for today. And our illustration is going to be, of course, Wrath. Okay, I'm going to zoom out the camera real quick. So our illustration Wrath is fairly simple. It's done on black paper. I actually did use my normal mechanical pencil instead of the one that randomly showed up from my grandfather. So if you want to learn that story, I'll link it in the card below. But yeah, so I decided to just do something simple. I'm only going to be using the Windsor Newton White Ink. And then on top of that, I'll of course be using my normal tools like my ruler, my quill pen, my dip pen, and my brush. I think that since it's going to be on black paper, that I think this is going to be giving us our best results opposed to just using it to clean up ink because as our page is drying, I am noticing a few more instances where it is turning blue, which is very interesting. And there's a few instances where it's not turning blue, which is even more interesting. Uh, but with that said, let's of course roll that super time lapse. And thus began the inking process, which guys, this was not fun. First off, for some reason, in between an hour, and that's how long it took from actually doing our test to me doing this illustration, the ink somehow became super gloppy. Like, this was a gel, not an ink. It's really weird how much of a paste it took on, because in the test, it was fine, and I didn't leave it open for that hour, but it just decided to become this goop, which made it near impossible to use with the quill pen. And my normal dip pen, I was lucky if I got lines longer than a centimeter. It was very bad. That right off the bat made the process far more difficult than it should have been, but it gets worse. I will say some of the more organic lines were pretty enjoyable and fun to do, but one thing I quickly learned is this ink does not layer well. And that's a problem because when it goes down, it is true white, but it quickly hardens and lets the black show when it dries, so that's not good, meaning you have to go over it again and again and again. It just makes it more blotchy and uneven. It just does not look right. When it came time to actually do the line work, dear God, this was a horrible, horrible experience. You could see all the terrible bleeding that was happening. I mean, it is ungodly. Some of the worst I've ever seen in my entire career. And it was not a fun process. So I should have made these lines without using a ruler. But in my defense, it should not have bled this much. In fact, this permanently altered how I was going to do the piece and the ending process of it. Using a brush for this ink was not enjoyable as well because there were so many instances where I had that layering problem. I probably did five or six layers just to get it to look white and it still doesn't look white on camera and in person. That's not good. Now, I know you're thinking some of this is my inexperience with inks and dip pens and that would normally be understandable, but I put quite a number of hours into mastering the dip pen this summer and I think I have a layer of skill and mastery in this medium that I definitely didn't have at the beginning of the year. I can definitely use a dip pen very effectively and I could definitely use brushes and ink washes very effectively. But this ink was just really unusable. Its sudden goopiness created an unhappy medium. It was way too goopy to actually use with the dip pens, but 
far too loose and thin to use with a brush because it went everywhere and I felt like I had very little control over it, even when I broke out my tiny brush. This ink also damaged a nib, making it almost unusable, and damaged two other brushes, which was not good. The multiple layers I had to do was not fun either, and on top of that, the different types of inking that went into this was also not enjoyable. This stuff also stained my desk and stained my hands as you can see. Illustrating the building in the background was tedious and not enjoyable. It took multiple layers and the line work on the windows turned out sloppy towards the end. On top of that, doing the lightning effect was a chore. Not only did I quickly learn that the nibs would not work in my quill pen, but I switched out multiple nibs to try and get this effect down. And because of how blotchy and ungodly it became at the end, I just said screw it and decided to make it a snowstorm by sprinkling the ink with a brush. So that effect worked great and I was really happy with how that looked, but again that was more out of necessity than the actual artistic intent of the piece in the original planning state was a definite sign that this white ink is not my cup of tea. We're done. We are finally done and oh boy, this was a this one was a challenge. Now, as always, the illustration we've done today will be available on my ArtStation account for a $1 digital download. So go check out that link in the description down below. Really looking at this ink, this was a disappointment. This ink has no variety to it. You can't use it to make corrections because you don't know how it's going to react to the ink you correcting. And it may mix, it may cover it, it may take several layers or it will just turn your ink blue. It's way too inconsistent. The fact that you can't even really use it on black paper at all and it's too thick or too gunky or too thin for brushes or dip pens all at the same time makes it very limiting. Now I do actually think this has a very specific use. If you use this to actually add in that snow rain effect that you saw me add into the art piece I made, I think it actually does this really well. This looks awesome and my go-to white inks can't do that. The Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White Ink can't really do that that well. It's way too thick so the splotches end up being too big. And the Sugu White Gel Pen is a gel pen so you could do that if you have a lot of patience. So this actually does that job really well. And if I was only rating this ink for that one specific use, it would get a 10 out of 10, but I, I'm not doing it. But I'm not doing that. I put it through the ringer and put it through my normal tests, and but I'm not doing that. I'm putting this ink through my normal standard tests, and it really did fall flat. I am very disappointed by the quality of this ink. So that's why I got the 3 rating on my scale of 1 to 10, because it's just below average. It excels in one very specific area, and in everywhere else it fails, and I can't give it a good rating. And this is very disappointing because this is Windsor and New. These guys make my favorite non-acrylic, and I love the inks I've tested so far, so it's a shame that this one's a dud, but not everything you make can be a winner. So this one gets a three. If you need a very specific ink for a very specific task, which is the snow rain effect, go for it. But if you need a white ink that's good, I recommend investing in the Sugu White Gel Pen and the Dr. PH Martin's Bleed Proof White Ink. I really hope you guys enjoyed the review. Hope you guys enjoyed the piece. I'm not super happy with how it came out, but hopefully you guys enjoyed it and hopefully you guys get inspired by it because that's the point of art is to inspire people. Subscribe to the channel for more art and animation based content. And remember, I'm J. Rod Balboa production. I ink with power and my own soul. See what I did there? I did a I did a variation of it. I'm gonna try and do that more. Be a lot of inks though. A lot of ink. A lot of ink. I totally don't have a problem. I can stop whenever I want. Bye.